This video lecture will show you how to set up and use a timer in Alice. This is a technique you might want to use as you are deciding on the own, your own game that you're going to program in Alice. There are two main parts to a timer and then some, the code that you need to use. So first of all, you need a global variable for the timer. This is similar to your count. And sometimes you can declare this variable in my first method, but sometimes it's the best to declare it at the scene level. When you declare it at the scene level, it's like a global variable and it can be accessed throughout the entire program. And this is pretty convenient for something like a timer where you might want to use it throughout various procedures and even in a click event. Now, just like you did with the counter, you also need a text object to display the time. So having a counter as a variable wasn't good enough. You couldn't see what the counter was unless you had a text object. It will be the same with the timer. The timer will be going regardless. But if you want to display the time on the screen, then you, need a, then you need a text object to display the time. Then in the code, you're going to decrement the timer every second. This is just the opposite of what you did with the counter. You would increment it every time you did something, like click. And you're going to use a while loop. You're, and the condition for the while loop is what the timer is greater than zero. So your countdown procedure might look something like this. The first line decrements the counter. You have your one second delay if you want the counter to the timer to go every second. And of course, you're going to be displaying in the text object. Then you're going to be using a loop, something like this. When we do our example, instead of using the word counter, we're going to use timer because you might want an actual counter in your program, something other than uh, the time. So let's get into Alice and just go through a quick example of a timer and then see how we might use it in the programs that we've already completed. For this first example, I already just created a quick scene. So I just used the, the ocean scene and I put one fish on it. We're going to make it do something so we can do it at the same time as the timer is going. And I also added two text objects, one to display a count and one to display a time. So if I want to display both, I need to have two separate objects. Then I also did just a quick jumping method. So you could do this at the fish level, or I just did mine at the scene level, but I'm just going to have a move up and down with a short delay. We're going to be adding some things to this. The first thing we're going to add, though, is our variable for the timer. So let's come here to our little icon, and I'm going to come here to scene level, and we just started doing this with some of our games. I'm going to make the variable a scene property. So I'm going to click right here, and a timer is going to be a whole number, just like the counter was. I'm going to call it timer. And I'm going to initialize it to maybe one more than I want. If I want to go 10 seconds, I'm going to start it at 11. You can kind of play around with this because you might want to actually start it at 10. This is just an example of how I'm going to do it. And once you figure it out, and you can kind of manipulate it and tweak it to just the way that you want to do it. So I've got my global variable, and I want to be able to create a countdown procedure to actually do um, the actual decrementing. Let's do this at the scene level. So I'm going to create a scene procedure and I'm going to call it countdown. So this is what you were seeing from the presentation. So the first thing I'm going to do is decrement my counter. So I'm going to come here and use my assign tile. And I'm going to be decrementing the timer. And I actually click on timer and then I'm going to do my math with a minus one. So when we increment, we use plus. When we decrement, we use minus. So I'm going to start at 10 or 11. I'm going to go down to 10, 9, 8. So it's going to be a countdown instead of counting up. Then I want to just wait one second before I decrement the timer again. So I'm going to come here to delay. I'm going to pick one. And I want to display on my screen the time. So I'm going to click here on my time text. And I have set value. We've used this before. And I'm going to use custom string. So I'm still going to say time, colon, and a space. And then I'm going to use my plus. And I want the whole number, which is my timer. So I'll use the word time and the value of the timer. And it's going to display it on the screen. So here's my countdown. Then I'm going to use this in a while loop in my first method. So I'm going to drag up my while. Always pick true. 
And for my condition, I want it when the counter is greater than zero, because this is going to count down. This is a whole number, and I use greater than, and I have my timer, and I have zero. So there's my condition. And what I want to do here is just count down. So if I click here on my scene, I'll see countdown. I'm going to drop it in there. Let's just see how it works. And then it stops because my count got to zero. So then you could have some kind of an ending to your game at this point. So it's not too interesting. So we're going to come in here to jump. And what I want to do is just to basically add in a counter so every time it jumps, it will count. So we'll just see how many times it counts in the 10 seconds. Then we'll add it even just yet one more twist to it. So let's come to my scene level and add another property. And this is going to be my count. I'm going to say counter. And we know that this is a whole number and it starts at zero. So now here in my jumping, every time it jumps, I want to increment my counter. So I'm going to use my assign tile. I'm going to come up here to counter and put counter and then use my math for plus one because I'm incrementing. So my timer is going to be decrementing and my counter is going to be incrementing. Then I want to display this. I'm going to click on my count text and set its value. And I'm going to say um, clicks. Or actually, I'll say jumps. And we'll make this change later. Space. And then I'm going to add the counter. So let's come back here to my while loop. And I'm going to stick this in. So I'm going to click on my scene. And here's jumping. And let's put this in the same while loop and just see what happens. So hopefully that's what you'd expect. Now we can put a little twist to this by actually doing two while loops in a do together. I'm going to drag up a do together tile. I have my while loop. I'm just going to copy it so I don't have to do the condition all over again. And one of them I'm going to have countdown and the other one I'm going to have jumping. So I have the same while loop but two different things happening and I want to do them at the same time. So let's drag them into here. Let's just see how this works. You can see this one's a little bit more smoothly because my jumping can happen independently of the timer now. So we're getting a slightly different effect. And then the timer ended so both of them stopped. Now one final thing we can do if we want to make this more game-like, I can count the clicks on the fish instead of just counting every time it jumps. So I'm going to take this code off. And I'm going to add an event listener. So if I click on the fish, I want to increment the counter. So let's add an event listener for this. It's going to be a mouse click. I'm always going to have my if statement. And then I'm going to put my relational string equals. And it's going to be the clownfish. And then I have to drag my event in here. So I've got if I click on the clownfish, then what I want to do is increment my counter. That's going to be an assign. So I drag up the assign tile. I'm going to have counter. I'm going to do my increment again. So I'm going to use math. And then I can display. So I'm going to click back on my count. Set the value. And this time I'm going to say clicks instead of jumps because it will be actually how many times do I click on the fish. And then add the counter. Okay, then I could just come here in my first method, I could add some instructions. So maybe the fish says click on me. So I just got a little instruction in there. And let's run this program. 
I'm going to click, click. Now, this isn't that interesting because the fish is always in one place, but still you can see how this could be kind of a game like. So I clicked eight times. Now, it is going to let me keep clicking even though the timer went out because this isn't linked to an event instead of the timer. Okay. And then what we can do is add in a win or lose kind of thing so that it, the fish doesn't keep jumping. So then I can put in an if statement and I might say something like um, I'm going to come down to my counter and if it's greater than let's say 10. So if I get more than 10 clicks so if my counter is more than 10 then I win. So we can have the fish say you win and if I don't he can say you lose. So let's try this one more time. And then you could actually like turn the screen a different color, whatever, so that you can't keep clicking on it, as you can see happens right there. But we've sort of turned this whole thing with the timer into a game. Now let's see how it might work with our Click the Pixie. So here's the uh, pop, the Click the Pixie program, but I, this is the one with the alien, so it's just a different example, but it's the same concept. You can see what I've done is added a text here for the time left. I also went into my scene and I added a timer variable here. And I came and I added a procedure for the countdown using the timer. So I have my decrement, my delay, and my set value. So I just added these very quickly into my Click the Pixie program. And now when it comes to my first method, there's just a few changes I need to make. I'm going to take this set value. I'm actually going to put it in the click event, so I'm just going to drag it to my clipboard, come to my click event, and just drag it down here. So as soon as I increment my counter, I will go ahead and display it. I can do it right here. Now, in my first method, I have these three things that I want to do, and I also have my countdown. So I'm going to add up a while loop here. This is going to be for my counter, I mean for my timer. So I'm going to come here to my whole number. And I want as long as the count, the timer is greater than zero. So here's timer and zero. I will need to do my uh, countdown. So I've got this going on. Now I'm going to copy this while loop, and I want to take this code in here, and I'm just going to put it right there. So instead of doing five pixies or whatever, I'm going to put this in the timer as well. Now I have to put these two timers in a do together, otherwise they won't happen at the same time. So I'll have this and I'll have this. So the countdown is going to go as the aliens are popping up. And it's going to do it for, I have put mine at 15 seconds, you can put whatever. And then for your ending you just have to determine what ending that you want. So for here, what I've done is decided if the counter is more than or equal to 10. So if I click on at least 10 aliens, I will win. Otherwise, I will lose. Okay. So let's just give this a try. Now the clicking worked fine and the time didn't. So let's just take a closer look at my countdown. I do have the show time, time left, but what I forgot to do was add the, uh, the timer. So I'm going to come right there and now I've got the time left and the timer going. So let's try it one more time. This time it should work correctly.
and this time I win. So this is a great example of how you can use a timer in your program instead of just deciding I'm going to have 10 pop up and see how many you can select. You can use a timer. Let's see how we might use this in the Guess the Game program as well. So here's an example of the guessing game program. I have to make a few more modifications to this to use a timer the way I would like to use a timer. So first of all, here under scene, when it comes to scene properties, I have added in the timer, the guess, the num random number, and the counter. Now the advantage of putting all of these variables here at the scene pro as a scene property, it makes them global and they can be used throughout the entire program without having to pass them as a parameter. They're just available to every procedure and to an event if you have it. So I just kind of move everything as a scene property. So that's the counter, the timer, and the guess, and the random number. So when I move them here, I can take them out from my first method. So I don't need this counter here. I've already made it global. And anything else that I had here, the guess and the random number, I've taken them out. I'm also going to take out this high-low because I'm going to make it local. So I'm basically not going to have any variables declared here, but I am going to take the random number that's now global and assign it a random integer from 1 to 20. So you take out all of your variables from here, make them scene level, then you're going to use the assignment statement for the random number and still get a random number. And then everything else is just going to basically happen where it was. So my intro, it's going to stay the same. I can say you have more than five tries. Maybe I want to change this to you have 10 seconds, you know, something like that. And you can just determine. And this, if you're doing levels, if you wanted to have a level, you know, hard, medium, or easy, it could be how many seconds that you give them. For my get guess, I'm actually going to make a local variable here for my text string. And it's going to be high or low. So this is what I had in the first method. And I'm just going to make it local to get guess now. And I'm going to get the guess. This is my scene level property from the user. And then my counter is also scene level. I'm going to increment it. I'm going to show the value. And then I'm going to compare the guess to the random number. And I just had to make changes here because before they were local from my first method and now they are scene level so I just have to use the appropriate new variables that I created and then still assign high and low here that's this one and then call which way with my new high low so I had to make some adjustments here with my global variables otherwise it's pretty much the same and I added in a countdown now to my first method I'm going to have two while loops and I wanted two different ways to stop either the timer and out or they guess the number. If they guess the number, there's no sense in keep going even if the time hasn't run out. So I needed to have an AND condition here. So while they haven't guessed the number, so I have the NOT, and the timer is greater than zero, the countdown is going to go, and I'm going to do a get guess. And then I have my ending, and then I put, if, the, if they did not guess the number, it was game over, and I said what the guess was. And if they did guess it, I might say something like, you know, yay, but I think I took care of that right here. I've already had the yes. Now before we run it, I made just a couple of quick changes. I changed it to 15 seconds. Here in my first method, I went ahead and set the timer to 15 seconds. So I don't have to remember what I did when I created it. If I know I want it to be 15 seconds, and if I put it here, it's easy for me to just change it and modify it as I want. So I could make this a medium, easy, hard type thing by just letting him um, choose a time. Also when you're doing a get guess, make sure that you're using the global variables here. If you didn't change it to the other count, or if you kept your regular variable count, you have an error. So make sure that you delete that and that you create a new assign using the global counter. So you kind of got everything kind of fixed up. I take a few trial and errors to get everything kind of worked out if you are changing this program. So now everything looks like this. Let's go ahead and run it. And I'm going to give myself 15 seconds to guess the number.
All right, and I was able to do it. So if you want to make these modifications on your games, you could go ahead. You could do something similar with the UFO game as well.